In my area of research, I've been um, working on something that I had the idea for back in the 80s. And the idea was that in response to neuronal injury or stress, that um, microglia in particular make a response and I thought that the response they would make would be to, to have a function like macrophages in the periphery when they are near cells that are insulted or stressed and their response would be to make interleukin-1 and in uh, the periphery we knew at that time that interleukin-1 induced the T helper cells to make interleukin-2 and then that started a whole cascade of the immune response and I thought a similar kind of, a, of event would happen in the nervous system that might account for the neurodegeneration. And the neurodegeneration would be similar to what you see, for example, in the knee when you have overexpression of cytokines like IL-1 that engender further and further uh, degeneration. So it's like the turning on of a system that in a small way might be beneficial to clean up a little debris, for example, and in um, a chronic situation, like for, like for example in a disease like Alzheimer's disease, then in that setting, because it's chronic, then over time you would produce more and more interleukin-1. And that would drive the cascade of events. And I envisioned that the cascade of events would be to activate astrocytes. They would make factors, not IL-2, but a factor we chose, S100 beta, because it it's induces the improper growth of neurites, the processes from neurons. And so over the, over the two succeeding decades, we've actually showed that this is an event that does happen and that we have a, now a lot of people are interested in this idea and have shown that there's an increase in the expression of the beta amyloid precursor protein favoring plaque development, an increase in phosphorylation of tau favoring tangle development in the neurons, and also uh, an increase in the production of alpha-synuclein, which is the substrate for the Lewy bodies in Parkinson's disease, which we now know is often accompanied by Alzheimer's disease. And these actions then, uh, this action of interleukin-1 and, and other cytokines likely, but these actions then govern the expression of the substrates, the neuropathological substrates that we see in diseases like Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, Downs, and in other diseases people are now becoming interested in. When uh, Bob Merak, Dr. Merak and I were thinking about having a journal, the Journal of Neuroinflammation, and, and I picked that name right off, um, then we decided that we would talk to our librarian about, you know, what would be a very good way to do, and I'd already talked to the people at some other publishing companies, and um, then when we went to her, she had just gone to a, a series of talks about open access publishing, and we said, well, this is the wave of the future. So we're definitely not going to go to some place that's in the past. And so we chose open access. And one of the reasons we chose it is we felt that we could immediately uh, get uh, papers coming in, manuscripts coming in, and we could they could see their results online. And it would be an instant kind of interaction between a person submitting their um, paper and then seeing that it had gone out for review and also uh, having a very rapid turnaround. And so, you know, we have a turnaround that's months or, you know, from I sent it to you and now here it is out and it can be even weeks. And I don't, that's very remarkable and quite wonderful. And besides, it's a wave of the future and we wanted to go in the new way. When we were choosing to start this journey and we knew we were going to go with open access we wanted to be sure to include people around the world because we have collaborators around the world and also of course we know people all around the world and so we wanted to make certain that our uh, editorial board represented the world and we chose the people on our editorial board and called them personally and asked them if they would be on and told them that we have uh, you know, we have faith that you will now send to us your articles and your best articles so we can present this information in a global way, which is the new way. And no, there's not really any way to do that except the internet and uh, 
search engines that you can use that will connect you with the whole world. One of the things that we were interested in in starting the journal is to have a, a global view while really concentrating on cytokines and other uh, markers of inflammation and also uh, looking at neurodegenerative diseases and then incorporating the newest information, the newest journal articles and the newest ideas. And so we felt in that way we would favor the young and the people with the new ideas. And that's one of the things that really needs to happen in science is we must start gathering in the new investigators and the people with the new ideas. Because as Abraham Lincoln said, the quiet dogmas of the past are insufficient for today.